Okay, David, are you that side? Yes, I'm here. Okay, David, I think we're gonna start now. Firstly, I just want to welcome everyone and thank you for taking the time out to join us today. Uh, first, I would like to thank David for his cooperation time, work, putting to this uh, seminar to make it happen. <coughs> and we are allowing readers Cape Town. Hope we can all benefit and from these deep discussions and another thank to David for giving us at Malawi Breeders Cape Town sole distribution of in Grand LTD in South Africa. Uh, I'll now pass on to David. Thank you. Yeah, thanks uh, so much, Ryan. And um, I see a few names here, Yusuf. Amir, Gavin, and Zahid, I think. Thanks for taking your time and, um, and coming on the call. I know we're all busy, we all have busy schedules, but I mean, it's always nice to, to catch up and see, you know, who's on the other side. So I know it's, uh, we have about half an hour and I'll just briefly take you through a few things. Uh, let me apologize that I can't keep my video on because then um, you know, it affects the bandwidth, then you won't be able to hear me clearly. Um, but I think earlier on, I just put the video so that you could have seen me, that it's me indeed on the other side. <laughs> yeah. So basically, I'll just start with an introduction of what we're doing. Mm, I hope you can all hear me clearly, right? Yes, I've got you clearly. Okay, perfect. Perfect. So, so our, our company here um, is called uh, Stuart M. Grant Limited, and uh, we're the oldest and largest ornamental fish export business uh, in Malawi. Um, our markets, um, mostly Europe, and uh, the Far East. When I talk about the Far East, I talk about um, um, China. We know they get their fish from Hong Kong. Occasionally, even though we haven't for a while, we'll ship out to Japan. Um, and then we also do shipments out to Of course, now we started with, Cape, with South Africa, Cape Town. We had done a shipment to South Africa before, but um, it's been a while. So, you know, the, you know, the most recent one is bringing some excitement to us too on the side. Um, we could have had a larger, out, an, a larger outreach in terms of our markets, but we're kind of restricted uh, from Malawi in terms of, you know, um, our flight connections. So, as you all know, when you're shipping fish, you know, there's a limited time in terms of how much they can stay in the bags. So some destinations, for example, you know, there's a good market in, 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 in Miami, in the United States. We used, to able, we used to be able to ship to them in the past, but now we can't ship to them uh, simply because it's so difficult to connect to Miami. So if we had to send a shipment out to Miami, it means our airport exit here is Lilongwe. The shipment would have to fly from Lilongwe uh, possibly to Nairobi or Johannesburg. And then from Johannesburg, it has to wait and connect on a night flight that goes into probably on the East Coast, which is New York, okay? And then from there, it also has to connect, you know, stay a bit of time and then connect all the way to Miami. Or alternatively, from Nilongwe to Joburg, Joburg maybe to London, London and then to Miami. So you can see how difficult it is. And if you're dealing with two different um, um, airlines, then it means you have to have two airway bills and you have to have an agent in between who has to take over the shipment and connect it, and all sorts of things can happen. So that's why we limit um, our exports to destinations whereby we only have 
a maximum of one connection in between. All right. Now, for example, with um, Cape Town, I think what we're doing at the moment, it's easier for us to ship into Johannesburg. And then from Johannesburg, you know, um, you, know you can um, uh, arrange uh, for the shipment to take you down to Cape Town. Because for us, it's just a direct flight from Ilonga to Johannesburg. So that just gives you an idea of how it works and, you know, and, um, and, um, and what you call this and, 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 and our outreach in terms of, you know, the network. So, like I said, we're the largest and, and oldest in the fish business in Malawi. We've been in business um, since 1973. So obviously, I wasn't born in 1973, which means that I didn't start business, all right? Um, the business was started by my late father, Stuart Grant, who was a former... Um, um, my uh, father with her. Sorry? Yeah, so the business was started by my late father, Stuart Grant, uh, who was a British national. And um, obviously he was from the UK, so he came to Malawi. Um, to work in the in, a, in the government. So as a child, he always had um, this hobby of keeping fish. And even when he came to Malawi, that was in England. So when he came to Malawi, he continued with his hobby. So he'd collect killifish and all sorts of fish from the rivers and the like. So generally people knew that this was a man who was into fish. Now what happened was Around 1972-73 in Malawi, there was interest for Lake Malawi fish, mostly in the U.S. And people knowing that, you know, um, he was one of the guys who was not interested in keeping fish, he was actually approached to see if he could start organizing shipments. So he was licensed in the central region, and then there was another team of brothers um, Peter and I forget the name of the other brother, Davis, who were stationed at Cape McClear. So there were actually two different exporters then. And um, so my old man started shipping his fish, collecting in the central region, that was his area, and then there was, you know, the Davis brothers on the southern side. So they um, started shipping fish, and then after a while, the two um, brothers down there uh, packed up the business for some particular, for whatever reasons that they were, and then he remained as the only one, you know, um, who started, who who continued with the business, and that's basically how the business started from nothing at all. And um, if you come to a facility right now, you know we have a, a large fish house. I mean, we're right by the lake. I'll, I'll send a video link of some some interviews that I did before, before where you can, you can have a look at. Um, but you know we're right by the lake. Um, we have about 200 and uh, over 200 um, glass aquariums in our fish house, and a total of about 396 ponds on the outside under shade netting. So there's always a lot of fish, you know, coming in and going out. Um, um, in terms of the way we are set up, I don't know how much you know about Lake Malawi, but I'm pretty sure that you know pretty much. But uh, Lake Malawi has the most number of fish species than any other lake in the entire world. So at the moment, um, I think we're hovering around a thousand plus species, you know, um, that have been, you know, that have been observed. Not all of them obviously have been described. Very few, you know, have gone through the whole scientific process uh, of being described. So most of these fish, you'll find that we just, I mean, we definitely wouldn't know what the genus is and possibly the species. So some of these species, we just call them, for example, you know, if a fish comes from Boazulu um, Island on the southern side and it hasn't been described yet, then, you know, we, you know, we find that fish, we call it, and we know it's a metriclima type. We call it metriclima species and the location where it was found, which is a Boazulu Island. So you'll find metriclima species, Boazulu. Or if we find a fish that hasn't been described, uh, Namalenje Island, and uh, you know it's an Olonakara species type, so it would be Olonakara uh, dot species. And you know, if we know the you know, uh, Olonakara dot species, and then you know, maybe um, Namalenje Island. So that's how it goes, all right? Unless it's been described then you know we just you know we, we tend to to name it according to where it was where it was located 
Um, in terms of the setup, so we have this our our our, our head office or um, you know uh, our main operational uh, location here in Salima Senga Bay. It's about 130 kilometers away from Lilongwe, our main city. If you're flying into Malawi, you'd fly from. And uh, we're right by the lake, as I said. We have another three stations uh, spread across across the lake. So we have a station up furthest in the north, um, in Chilumba, whereby we have an office and a team of divers. So normally we have a team of four divers. And, um, and uh, we've got an office there, and they have all the equipment boats, compressors, you know, um, engines and things like that, uh, that they use for their, you know, for their collection. Then we have the same kind of setup at Likoma Island. So that team there covers both Likoma and Chizumulu Islands. If you go on the map, you see that they're right next, you know, close to each other. And then we have another team stationed at Nkata Bay, which is also on the northern side of the lake. Um, and they cover that region up and down of you know, that coast. And then we have a team right here in Salima uh, at our station in Senga Bay that covers also a much uh, larger area. <coughs> Excuse me. Yeah, so basically we have four dive teams. Um, um, uh, a team um, uh, of, of uh, fish house staff that look after the fish house well, because when the fish have been collected, they need to be brought here to the premises where they have to be cared for, they have to be counted, they have to be sexed, so we can count with the stock list that we send out to you, where you, choose, um, you can choose your fish from. Um, so that's basically you know, our setup, and when the fish, what happens is all these uh, divers collect the fish, and then um, they bring them down here, to the you know to the to the fish house and then when they come to the fish house we put them in the glass tanks we let them rest and then the next day what we're doing is we are busy um you know sorting the fish by sorting we mean that you know we are putting the you know like species together and we're counting males and we're counting females and then coming up with the stock list once the stock list is ready we send it out to our customers. So this stock list will include what we have in stock plus what has just come in. Um, so basically, you know, um, that, that's how it works. Um, as a business, um, what else do we have? So we've got Stuart M. Grand Limited, which is the fundamental fish export business. But then also on the same property, we have a Red Zebra which um, is the name taken after the red zebra fish, otherwise known as um, Metriclima esterae. And um, um, esterae, obviously, it was called esterae um, after my mother because she was very instrumental in getting access to these fishes, which originally come from the Mozambique side of Lake Malawi at a place called Minos Rift. So for us to get access, she played a very important role in negotiating with the authorities and making several trips to the East Coast for us to get access to this, uh, to the red zebra fish, which is the estuary. So Red Zebra Lodge, um, uh, we've got Red Zebra Tours, which does uh, Lake Malawi, you know, underwater diving safaris. We get lots of groups of, um, you know, of hobbyists. Most of our clients organize groups of people, you know, ranging between four, five, six, seven, eight, they come, they go on the lake, you know, they go on the lake, and then at the last day they take a shipment out. They also, you know, those that can collect can go out and try and collect. And then after that, then they organize to take a shipment out with them and maybe there's some few fish that they've caught on their own. Um, we also do conference facilities. So that's for, you know, more or less the local market that we have here. And um, as we speak, you know, we're venturing now into aquaculture because we've got quite a lot of land over here that is sitting idle so we decided as a family to venture into an aquaculture business and by that i mean we're gonna start um, breeding some you know uh, set up some hatcheries and some cage culture where we'll be growing some fish the famous chambo or tilapia species from the lake uh, both for consumption for export and also for the domestic market so that's a project that is in the pipeline 
Um, so we're quite busy, and um, our vision uh, is to be the center of Lake Malawi, uh, sickly trade, education, research, conservation, and community outreach. So everything has to do with Lake Malawi sickly, we want to be the center of all that. Okay, and um, our mission is to share the secret experience uh, with Lake Malawi secret enthusiasts all over the world in a sustainable manner. So I think I've spoken for quite a while and let me pose over there um, and see what I can get to well. And let me pose over there um, and see what I can get some reaction. Thank you. Thank you, David. Thank you for that. Uh, I know there's always a lot of confusion in Cape Town when it comes to various species. Um, I thought maybe we just have a few minutes. This is maybe one question I want to ask. Or maybe you can just clarify. In Cape Town, there's one species that we always confuse as the Olonokara Ngara. Um, most will say it's Madoka and some will say it's Ngara. Can you maybe just give us a short um, understanding of the difference of when people say Ndoka and some will say Ngara? All right. Yeah, thanks for that question, Ryan. If you look at the map, the location of Ndoka and Ngara is not very far away. So, you see, sometimes when the divers are collecting the fish, um, you know, the the the, the this different this this species will not all be in one place, okay? They'll be in two different places. So for that particular species, whether they're collecting from the Ngara side or Ndoka side, we just refer to it as Olonakara Ndoka Ngara because more or less it's you know it's the same type of fish, but probably at two different points. So but what I can say is they mix them up. Yeah. So it's the same species, different locations, collected at a similar point, but regarded as one Garam Doka. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Okay, thank you. And another thing is, David, um, another confusion we do have here, uh, it's collection points. You know, most species comes maybe from a region called Chizumulu. And in Chizumulu, there's maybe a few type of species in there, uh, especially with the Copodochromus trevavasi. Uh, we've got a chart with more than seven different Copodochromus trevavasi. You get Lupingu, you get Chizumulu, you will get Likoma. In your opinion, how much different are they? Is it only location that make the species different or easier? A resemblance in a complete different look. Okay, I can talk up. I can I can talk about um, Chizumulu and uh, and Likoma Island, but not Lipingu because I think yeah. that is uh, that is a different yeah. location altogether. Yeah. Yeah, but um, but when we you know when we they, they look very similar, you know. Um, the, the we call them um, Copodichromis, however, say Omloto Chizumulu, Omloto Likoma. All right, they look quite similar, but um, Chizumulu and Likoma are quite far apart. So even when the fish come in over here, Chizumulu and Likoma fish are not mixed because those locations are are quite far apart. Okay, mm -hmm. so if we're selling you this Travava say from Chizumulu. It will be Chitavasphere from Chizumulu. And what happens is when we're doing auctions, at any particular point in time, if we're collecting from Likoma, that trip will only concentrate around Likoma Island. So the various reefs and, and points on Likoma Island. And then which means the next the next collection will be from Chizumulu. So we alternate between the two. Okay. So you have Travava saying uh Kopadikromis Travava say from Likoma, you know, at one time on the stock list, and then the next time you have Traverse from uh, Chisumulu Island, and that's how we do it. Yeah. Thank you, thank you, thank you, David, for that. Um, maybe I'm thinking I've got some time. Maybe there is anyone here, a few guys here in, 
David wants to ask David a specific question. I have another opportunity to do so. Yeah, uh, this is Yusuf here. Um, I just want to know, uh, there's some confusion as well coming back to the Nagara. Is there a red variation of the Nagara as well? A variation. Um, we don't really see any variation um, in, those, in, in those fish. Um, I mean, ever since I've started, you know, seeing the fish come through. And um, that's why we just regard them, you know, uh, you know, as the same. But I haven't seen any variation in that, in that particular species. So, so, as I understand, they're all yellow. There is no red color in the Nagara. No, I don't see a red in there. It's sort of like a deep, um, a, a deep sort of like yellow that goes towards orangish, I'd say. Like you see it in the book. I don't know. It just depends on what source you're looking at. Because what I tend to find, Yusuf, is um, if, if the photos that you see on the internet and in the book obviously have been enhanced. All right? So, you know, sometimes a customer will receive the fish and say, but it doesn't look like what it looks like in the book or on the internet. But it, it also depends, all right? So sometimes those photos I worked on, they enhanced, you know, in terms of the coloration and things like that. And sometimes those species are not wild caught fish, they're bred fish. So they'll look perfect, all right? They'll be, because what we are dealing in is what we catch in the wild. So the characteristics that you see in the wild are different from what you see in a tank bird fish. It'll be perfect with everything. You know, it hasn't been attacked or whatever. It's just like, you know, an animal that is being kept in the wild and an animal that is being kept in an enclosure somewhere. It will be different in terms of, you know, um, how it looks and, you know, how it behaves and things like that. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that um, understanding on Nagara, David. Um, David, I think our time might be cut off in the next one to three minutes. Um, I just want to thank you again for making this um, opportunity for us just to hear your voice, get a bit of insight on some questions we have. Um, also, thank you the guys that has joined. Uh, we, will, we will be making this video a bit live for those that haven't heard on some of the topics or discussions that we've spoken about. And yeah, Yusuf has been breathing. I think he's standing a record in Cape Town for the amount of fry that is bred so far. Maybe you should just give us an indication how many fry is breeding on Yusuf. Well, I've got about 320 Melandi fry, and then I expect another 300 in the next week and a half. There we go. So, uh, yeah, for some cool. reason, the females has, after I strip them, they breed again like three weeks, not even three weeks later again. So Yusuf is doing something something well. We can learn from Yusuf. <laughs> Absolutely. No, that's very good to hear. And what I must say before it cut us, cuts off is um, thank you for this call and, um, and thank you, um, Rayan, for your persistence. <laughs> Uh, you know, in, in getting a shipment uh, to, to Cape Town, like I said before, I've received many, many inquiries from South Africa, but, uh, you know, none of them really, you know, materialized. You know, as soon as I send the stock list, then, you know, then people will just go quiet because I think it's cheaper to get them from Europe. But, you know, what you're getting from Europe or the Far East is different from what you're getting from us. What you're getting from us is a world court and... The wild caught species you're getting from us is what Yusuf is able to do with what he's able to do at the moment, and maybe the other breeders. Yeah. Well, so thank you very much for that and for resuscitating that hobby. And uh, you know, we look forward to you know to, to working with you and to getting more fish into um, into Cape Town. So thank you for for your work and thank you to the entire uh, team on on the call. Thank you. Thank you so much, David. David, there was one question. Uh, it's Nasir. Um, the vaginalis species, uh, the fire, the fire crest vaginalis is caught at which point? Okay, so the Copodichromis vaginalis was spotted at Gome. That's on the east coast. All right. Uh, the, the fire crest. 
Yeah, the fire crest. That fish hasn't been seen in over maybe 30 years. Okay, so it's an endangered species. It's, 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 a, deep, it's a deep water fish. Okay. So we really don't know, you know, because, I mean, you know, your divers have to be really maybe they've moved you know further down okay um, at some point i don't know it was a while ago we tried to go to go down you know um uh, the divers tried to go down they found you know uh, another um you know copadichromis vaginalis but the dorsal fin wasn't as red as the as, as the fire crest um, oh, okay. I mean, I've, I've, I took it from my old man about some 11 years ago. I mean, he, he passed away in 2007, but I only took over the business in, in 2010. But obviously, I've been involved in the business, you know, uh, for, for, you know, almost all my life. But what I can tell you is, ever since I've been, I've, I've, you know, I've, I've been involved in the business, I've never seen, you know, myself a virginalis firecrest from the wild. I haven't. Oh, okay. Okay. okay so there was something that we caught out. Try and see. I'll fetch the you know I'll fetch the photo of what we found, and it was quite a deep fish. Uh, you know, a, deep, a fish that was in deep waters, maybe about forty meters or so, and only a oh. few divers can go down there and catch that fish. So I'll send you the photos. And when we sent it, um, you know, even Ad Connings, I think, was around at that time, and we're looking at it. He hadn't been described, and he said, ah, David, this looks like the true Vegetalis, you know, and that's how the conversation ended. But we couldn't quite figure out. It didn't look like the fire crest was the, it wasn't as deep red, but it was yellow. So I'll find the photo and I'll send it to Rian. Okay. All right. Thank you, David. Thank you, David. You're welcome. David, yes. Nazir, Nazir has been hunting me long for that species. Please help us find that species for him. <laughs> maybe when you come down, we'll let you go 40, 50 meters and go, man. And then maybe you can try and go <laughs> with our divers and try and go catch it. <laughs> sure, sure. You need a special eye.